where I come from, you know, people like that get slapped. It was nice to see the real Anderson come through, you know, the guy's a dirtbag. Show me, dude. I'm gonna beat his ass like he's never been beat before. I don't have any enemies in this sport. You wanna be an enemy? I gladly accept, motherfucker. When you know him the way I do, you just wanna punch him in the face. If you don't know, you should know. This is static. I was thinking about your fucking little interview I just watched um, this morning before I left my house. Um, I just want to tell you, fuck you. Double. Sometimes familiarity can breed contempt, and when that happens, those who will seemingly be friends can become fast enemies. You know, if the fight doesn't happen, well, we know why. We know why. Why? I ain't no bitch. On April 17, 2010 in Nashville, Tennessee, during the post-fight interviews for Jake Shields and Dan Henderson, Jason Mayhem Miller stormed the cage. And what ensued would go down in MMA infamy. Jason came in the ring and got kind of got in Jake's face right after he you know, fought me and, and uh, wasn't the time or, or place to even do that. What's up, where's my rematch, buddy? Miller gets involved in this and that, and then a huge riot starts. Now, I kind of felt bad for Miller because it was, I think it was like five on one or something, and he, you know, he got a good hiding on TV. Made perfect sense to me. Diaz, everybody knows is crazy, and both these guys uh, just carry in themselves like a chip on their shoulder all the time. You would think they would be friends. You would think if, if the situations were different, but... The statute of limitations run out on that. Uh, Tennessee Athletic Commission hit me up for a bunch of money because I went in there and asked for a rematch and got jumped. He took some, he took some shots that night, you know? I had a fight that night and smashed the guy like decisively so i was like hell yeah this is gonna be great whoops he got out of line and that's just what happens if you put all this little chemicals together you can get a reaction you know i forgot i was dealing with all those hood kids from stockton and, and you know if i, I if i would have stayed in the hood i might have turned out just like them yeah you're still angry you know he's still in the hood you know of course with miller he, he would try to steal a little bit of light whenever he could start some shit but at least you know i hope everybody appreciates a good show you guys jumped me on TV. So I started calling for the beat. Man, fuck Nick Diaz. Wow. Whoa. Oh, words. Yeah, I said it. Anyway. It, what it is just, your problem with Nick Diaz? No, because you know what? I feel like he was a driving factor in that whole thing. He's the first guy to throw a punch. He started that whole thing. Then all of a sudden I start seeing him pop up places and I'm like, you don't want to just run into me now. On, Nick Diaz. Stockton, motherfucker. Stockton, son. I don't care about contracts, man. I don't care about, it's just the way it is. That's the only way I'm going to feel safe. Cause I'm, you're gonna try to get the jump on me, I'm gonna have the jump on you. And on October 9th, 2010, the two had another running in at a strike force event. And I'll see him later on too, and I'll be like, where you at now, motherfucker? He threw a bottle at me? Just to try to pop it off like, again. Y'all want us to fight in the cage like animals, we're gonna act like animals. I don't care where it's at, weigh in, you know, keep on your side of the fence. And we don't have a problem. Fortunately for Miller and Diaz, they're in a profession where they get paid to fight. His style matched up perfect with mine. So I started calling for the beat. Ariel Hawani backstage at Strike Force Houston with Jason Mayhem Miller. And everybody remembers I steal his line and fucking make a t-shirt. Don't be scared, homie. Referencing a famous line said by the great Nick Diaz with his t-shirt, right? The best unintentional comedian of our generation. Some things happen the way they are, you know? I wasn't trying to make a fight happen. He was trying to make a fight happen. You're gonna go ahead and be mad at me and blame me for jumping you? Cause you got jumped and you bit your asshole cause you're bitter about how you got your fucking ass handed to you? Like, dude, you know, look at your little marketing scheme, you know, fucking screws up, and now you want to blame me, talk shit. I'm a lot of favors, man. And I don't talk to those guys. They don't even speak English. They speak mumbling gibberish. Haven't you seen this on YouTube? Fuck you. While usually rivalries are settled in the ring, a fight never materialized between the two and their differences still have yet to be settled. And as both fighters on again, off again relationship with the UFC continues, they may never fight. This is the fight business and a lot of people don't know what that means. I always wonder about that, like are these people gonna <laughs> deal with me because I'm gonna <laughs> slap the fuck out of somebody. Nick Diaz again living up to his reputation. 
action as the bad boy of mixed marks alarms the Diaz brothers. Having MMA on CBS, it was a pretty big thing for the sport, and, and to kind of screw that up is, was a big no-no. Mayhem's a knucklehead, but in fairness, the wrong guy was blamed. You know, there's Mayhem by himself, and I believe he was the one that was uh, was punished. I think he was the one that ended up with the suspension in that whole thing. I, I think he knows what's up. If the matchup ever happens in the ring, we are yet to see. But with these two, a ring may not be necessary.